Hey there, Carrie. <clears throat> it's great to look at this score by you, and I have to say your skills are getting so much better. Uh, every time I see a score from you, or you know, as uh, and also looking at your scores from the MOOC Term One, <clears throat> it's just great to see you getting so much better with each passing year. So let's talk about a few things here. Maybe kind of addressing some of the um, some of the notation issues first, right? And then we will discuss the actual scoring. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> excuse me, it's really early in the morning here. <clears throat> first, let's discuss the slurring of harmonics. Okay, so you've used harmonics in quite a few places here, and we'll talk a little bit about whether or not those are feasible. <clears throat> but first, um, the issue about this is that, you know, you know there, there is kind of unsystematic slurring in general throughout this piece. And I've already discussed before how you shouldn't you shouldn't slur a staccato past um, past the staccatos. Like you shouldn't just have the slur go over into an accent, right? Because what you're telling the players is to slur everything in one breath or in one bow. And what that means is that this doesn't this is just a um, this will be an accent that comes from the diaphragm, right? So they're just punching it with their breath rather than tonguing it, right? So it's a difference between um, like the way you've got it scored, it would be uh, 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 you know what I mean? As opposed to if you were to take the end of this slur and move it back uh, Then you got a uh, 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 tongue, right? And it's the same thing with this. Um, slurring a staccato means that they'll they're going to be on the same bow, still very light and staccato. But then, if you don't, you know, if you move the end of the slur back, then this can be a new bow, right? So I've I've mentioned this in quite a few other scores already, and. The problem with this is that this is this is sort of imitating the piano slurring, like right? the piano phrasing. But piano phrasing and slurring for wind, brass, and string players is completely different, right? Uh, I just really need to make my video about transcription errors because I feel that I, I mean it, it just would be a good thing for people to watch for um, you know when they when they're doing these uh, challenges and then I wouldn't have to repeat a lot of things but okay here we've got a situation let's to get back to the whole question or problem of slurring harmonics okay so if all of these harmonics were possible to be played natural like as natural harmonics then you could slur from one to the other but there the suggestion here is that these would all be artificial harmonics which means that all the positions would be uh, with one finger holding down the root and then the ring finger or sorry the uh, the little finger would or would be touching the node of a fourth above it right so all art artificial harmonics now if you slur them all that means that they will basically slide from place to place you know so this is not going to be da, da. it'll be da, da. right that'll be there'll be like a sense of glissando present or portamento actually to be more precise now the other problem here is that no matter what your um no matter what your sound sets are telling you, these pitches down here cannot actually all be played as harmonics, right? Artificial harmonics start 
at G or G sharp uh, above the staff or right right on top of the staff. That's because that is you know you could you can touch the touch four harmonic on an open string in the G and and get this G two octaves higher, and that is the lowest you can go unless you had a few extra strings going lower on your violin. Right, so these harmonics are not possible except for this D right here. This D would be an octave node harmonic. So everything else is impossible. There, there is a possibility that the player could just play these as, um, like, play this as an open string, right, and to simulate the sound of a harmonic if they play softly. And as to these other ones, they could try to maybe play without without vibrato, right? To to try to kind of get that same sound. But you know, there really are. I mean, this note right here would be possible once again. A D at at the octave node. Then looking down here at the viola, this C right here would be possible for, at the octave node. But but generally speaking, like this is just really an impossible, impossibly scored uh, passage. Now, if all of this were an octave higher, that would be a different story, right? You wouldn't run into the limit till you got to this F sharp, which would be an octave higher, right? So that would be possible. But the way that it's written is just clearly not working, okay? So you need to study up on artificial harmonics a lot more. If you have got, um, I think I discussed this a little bit in 100 orchestration tips, but I even discuss it a bit more in 100 more orchestration tips. So just, you know, just learn about artificial harmonics a little bit better and what their range is. Just, you know, the the lowest note that you could possibly get is um, is G, although you can do touch five harmonics and you can get lower, but then, you know, you it only gives you a couple more notes or a few more notes. All right. Okay. So um, now that I've covered some of those things, see, like this is, this is once again, like here, this A could be played as an open string, right, to simulate the I, the sound of an of an of a natural harmonic. Same with this E, but really the only the you know right here is where you get the artificial harmonics from this G natural up okay and then this one would be possible uh, this G sharp so yeah so just really learn more about artificial harmonics what the range is and what's possible all right now let's talk about the scoring <clears throat> so there are a lot of really fun ideas what I would caution you about is that the support is a little strange like the the way that you're supporting certain things you're adding certain things that kind of confuse the uh, the flow of the music and sometimes the melody is sort of hard to follow it doesn't quite um, like in, in terms of its its timbre it doesn't quite uh, stand out or lead the music as much as it could. All right, there are a few specific examples of this, but I'll point them out as I go along. Okay, so we're starting out here, and this is great. <clears throat> Just, you know, flute and some harp, that's great. And then you change immediately to clarinet. This should also be slurred, right? <clears throat> now, here we have a problem of balance. Da 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 dum da 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 da, and here you want to go da 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 bum bum bum, right? You want this to dovetail underneath. Um, there are no slurs here. I don't know why, right? Where's the slurs? You should have slurred these, you know, to to kind of keep this consistent. This should be slurred. That should be slurred, and so on. The problem is that there isn't really. Um, there isn't a sense of the music leading from one place to the to another. I don't mean uh, I don't mean leading tones or anything like that. But there's no sense of like carry through. Da 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 dum, bum bum bum. Uh, or actually, this goes bum 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 bum. So I think this is a wrong note right here. 
Yeah, um, be careful about that. See, if Lily uh, intended this to go up from beneath, and then, and then the, for the music to climb gradually from place to place, if when, by going to this D sharp too early, <clears throat> you take away the sense of the music progressing upwards little by little. Okay, but the big problem is going from this C sharp to that F sharp. So this F sharp comes in softly, right? And right here, we have piano crescendo. So we really don't have a big balance here. You know, it's like it, it's it, this voice comes in so softly that it doesn't really help the melody to flow from place to place, right? And then we have doubling of flute and clarinet, which is not really going to be all that great for this low F sharp. Okay, it, but anyhow, but it, I mean, it, it more or less works as you progress further. But once again, some of this could have been slurred a little bit better. It's really lovely what you do here at the end, though. That's really, really great. Um, has an excellent effect, and it also came through really nicely in the uh, mock-up I would have kept <clears throat> I would have kept things consistent and had the horns finish out here uh, adding harmony a three-part harmony just a little bit right here at the end just to keep the timbre consistent right even if it was like at, at a pianissimo or triple P okay and a little bit of Celesta this is this is all kind of good. I mean, ba ba da da ba ba da da da. Here you're going to um, divisi in three voices for your uh, for your violins. I would actually add the second voice here, right? It to the uh, to the second violins to spread it out across the across the sections a little bit better. Uh, this is an interesting voice crossing here with a uh, with a viola part above, and it it gets a little just right towards the end. the The motion of the parts gets a little confusing. You know, I, I mean, I feel that you're adding a a note or two here, or it, it's just there's something about it that just really isn't quite as clear as it could be. But then you make up for it here. This is kind of nice. Bum, 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 bum. The English horn, like right here, you've got this balance. You've got mezzo forte in your, uh, in your first flute. Looks like you intend that to be first flute. It's a little, yeah, I mean, it's a little inconsistent the way that you've marked this. Like here at the beginning, this seems to suggest that the top voice will be first voice because of this rest here. But you really should mark it like a ah, due, you know, a ah, tu. And same thing here. I don't know which oboist this is. Is it both? Is it one? You know, I don't. I, I can't tell. Same thing here. Which clarinet player is it? Two clarinet players. Which bassoonist is it? Two bassoonists. So you need to like go over your scores a little bit more when you edit them, get them ready to send to me. All right. Because it's the same thing that you would do if you were to send it to an orchestra, to your librarian, to the manager, to the conductor. So, um, but this still works pretty well. Um, bum, 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 bum. You're trying to keep everybody under, right? You have your, <clears throat> your flute playing louder, and then you have the other parts softer, except for like the violins or the strings. They're, they are softer, and then, yeah, I mean, it, it sort of works. I, I don't know if it's quite so necessary to have the English horn playing piano there. I think everything could be mezzo forte except for the horns. I think that the, I think the flute can handle this. I think that it's just like right here when you go, when you're doing voice crossing, don't do that, right? Uh, Yeah, I, I, I think that I think that it really should be the flute that is the higher voice and the English horn that is the lower voice here. Okay, and I know you don't want the English horn to overwhelm the flute. Eh, you know. Okay, I mean I could accept that. 
Okay, um, and then you have your answering of strings and harp and celesta, a little bit of flute. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm just like looking at this and thinking about it more and more, and I just really think that you're using flute too much for everything, for middle voice kind of stuff. This just would really be much better as a clarinet kind of a line if you're if you're mixing it in with English horn. You know, even though you're compensating for the balance here, I, I just still feel it's it's a it's a just a weaker combination, really. Um, you, I mean, it's it's considering the amount of doubling that there is here with strings and everything else there kind of is no real I can't really see any advantage over using flute rather than clarinet there and then you know just makes the moments with with flute that are not doubled all that much brighter and and more interesting right okay bum 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 and once again flute scored pretty low and buried by the people around it right so you know da 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 and and i would say right here just like shift over to english horn and then have the english horn finish the uh finish that that particular line which would be a better combination with clarinet anyway right yeah, I mean, just a real, there's just a real assumption throughout this that the flute is way stronger and way more present in in complex combinations with other instruments than than you think, you know, I mean, that it, it or that then then is real. So just really watch that, Carrie. I mean, this is something that I've talked about in many evaluations in of other scores of, you know, I mean, and here's another example, right? The flute used really scored low. I mean... The, the flute really loses strength below C in the staff, right? Just, you know, it, it is first octave from middle C up, or B if you have a B foot in your, so from B up to C in the staff, that really is a much gentler tone. And it's not just that it's, I mean, some, some flute players can play loudly in that, in that region, but they tend to get kind of an uglier sound right the the concert sound that that is aimed for is naturally a softer more elegant sound all right and it's just kind of you're, you're basically using it as a clarinet you know like you're kind of substituting for clarinet parts and clarinet registers or or registers of line that would be so much better as played on clarinet okay um yeah so this is score in C as you can tell um, so that that also can be a little distracting for me evaluating it but that's all right I could have always just corrected this in the settings for Sibelius and I didn't I chose not to so that's all right okay bum 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 da 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 bum ba da dum bum 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 okay so this this is kind of fun right in here I I really enjoyed this a lot um, yeah, so it's it's. I like the approach of just using uh, brass in a in a very subtle way. Just a little touch here and there. Did you notice how much the uh, that F sharp just stuck out, just like you know, because you you're doubling it by, you know, you've got a first horn plus one of your trumpets, I don't know which one, plus one of your trombones, right? They're all sitting on that F sharp and they are just blowing it out. That is going to kill this soft, elegant F sharp. You intend, I mean, you're, you've scored, you've scored um, harmonics here, right? And flute and clarinet. I mean, that combination is just so beautiful and subtle. And then you've overlaid it with just massive amounts. I mean, even at piano, uh, I mean, it, you'd hear it in the mock-up, right? Just that that much weight, that much weight of brass on that one note was just huge. Okay, but I mean, the part before it, this little line here on, on horn was really nice. All right, well, going on. Um, yeah, and, and I, just, just to point one thing out before we pass... I'm sorry, I'm a little scattershot. I'm just getting back into evaluating. 
this was really cool. This one little hanging bee, um, you know, as the as the echo went into effect. That was really great. Okay, okay. So now let's talk about A. Finally. So yeah, this the scoring here is okay. It's it's pretty functional. And uh, you know, see now now you're using oboe. Oboe is another sort of more mid range wind that you could be using instead of flute all the time, all over the place, right? That would have just have much more strength and color, and and would be able to blend better with the other choices that you've got around it. Now here is a weak spot, right? You you're doubling with. English horn and oboe uh, on this line here with strings or with the uh, first violins and then you sort of drop out your support as the line rises so now there's less thickness and then you get up to this G and then down to this tied D and look there's nothing there's no more support what what happened right why are we not getting any support there I mean, yes, you, you're adding some force here with horns and there will be overtones that help fill in. And that actually just confuses the issue, right? I mean, we need, if you're gonna partner your melody line here, you need to partner it all the way through, right? If you, if you drop out right at the, at the biggest spot, then your strings are suddenly weaker, right? They don't, just don't have as much um, they don't have as much support as they did before. And also, like, you know, we've got, um, you've got this octave right in here between the cellos and the first violins. Couldn't that have been doubled by somebody? Like the, um, you know, like the, the uh, bassoons maybe? There's a little bit of confusion here in your contrabassoon part, you have a single contrabassoon, and then, and yet, right here, you've got intervals, right? You've got this uh, F sharp seventh. So this, this is there's an E on top here, and then you overlay that with another F sharp seventh. It's the same basic notes in uh, in bassoon, scored an octave lower, but of course sounding at the same pitch. So you know, really, what you need to do is just. Uh, just have, and, and it's strange, you're, you're throwing in this high contrabassoon note here, which is just so much more powerful and secure on uh, on just a standard bassoon. And then right here you've got, um, you've got these diving down F sharps to Bs, right? Well, why couldn't they double at pitch with a double bass, right? Why couldn't this just be, it would be scored in the same, right? This is like so, here we're doubling at pitch, arco double basses, right? So this is all the same. And then here you're playing an octave higher. It, look, it just doesn't really add anything to the music the way that you got that scored, right? It would be better to double the double basses lower on. It's not that that high F sharp is hard to play for a contrabassoonist. It's just not a very, you know, it just doesn't have that same quality of tone that. That a bassoonist would have on that same note, right? You've and you've already got that note there. It would be better for this to be bassoons a two, right? B F sharp, and then play an octave here. Then you would get like the same effect, rather than just adding the contra bassoon in there, right? That's I I feel. And then here you could just have this octaves, like this could be played by second bassoon. So yeah, just feel we've got a. It's just a slightly, yeah, and then this right here, you, you weren't thinking, right? So, yeah, so just watch out. Don't give, like, if you've got a single part, don't give them intervals, right? If you've got a single wind part. Okay, so going on, <laughs> I keep getting distracted from evaluating this, but I, I think I gave it the college try. So, yeah, and then you're coming in here, so this gets a little confused. Did you hear it in the mock-up? Just the scoring from here to the next page. Yeah, it just it didn't quite gel. Now, 
Ba-da-dum, bum, ba-da-dum, bum, bum. So, yeah, and, and once again, a little confused in here, right? So you've got viola doubling uh, bassoons an octave higher, or, or I should, sorry, I should say octaves with bassoon and viola. So this is not quite as strong as you need it to be. <clears throat> the support right in here of, of brass and strings just just doesn't have enough oomph or excuse me uh sorry i'm saying this sideways um the support instruments here are drowning out your melody right it's happening in the mock-up it would happen in real life now here we have this strange thing happening here you you, you ha you're playing an octave lower and then suddenly you leap up to the you know what would be the next note if you were an octave higher so I'm wondering why that is. You know, why aren't the violas playing where they should be and and doubling this flute line right here, right? And then once again, flute starting off in a very weak register, right? Just, I mean, and the same thing. The piccolo is actually pretty weak there. Here's a place where you need to be strong in order to compete with all of these other elements, right? And yet it's, but I mean, right here at the end, it's very magical. Right? I just really love the scoring, like they, where you end up is great, right? It's just leading there is just a very, you know, it could be a lot stronger. Now here, this Celesta part right in here will just not be heard by anybody. It's just, you know, it, it, it's buried in the mock-up and it's buried in real life, right? Celesta, in this regard would really only be audible like an octave higher or even you know as high as it could possibly play before you would sort of hear that beautiful gentle chiming and that would go really really well with piccolo right so if you could just rescore that so that it would you know so that it would chime together with higher elements then you have a chance of this of these working together but where it is it has a very thunky sound and it gets buried by any kind of soft horn playing, soft brass playing. It really just gets smeared. And and by fervent strings. It's, it's kind of interesting the way that you've got this score. You're arriving at mezzo forte with your support elements, right? And, you know, arriving at mezzo forte in your brass. And all the while, your melody is playing soft here in the violas, and the violas are playing soft while the bassoons are playing mezzo forte. So the the overtones of the bassoon are canceling out the violas with their stronger voice, and yet they're not strong enough to de to come excuse me to compete with the with the brass, right? See, so that so that's just a just a question. And then right here, the viola starts off an octave lower than it needs to be and doesn't support the flute and then the flute is too weak right see so just a bunch of choices here I mean I think you were going for color I think I understand what you meant but then you know by having such such strong support with um, with brass and strings it just really just stomps all over your delicate idea if the brass had been marked down to like pianissimo up to piano then we would hear a lot more of this. The same that the strings marked way down, right? Then we would be able to hear that melody coming through. Okay, but really, it's just magical right here at the end, right? That that's just a, such a cool idea. So just you know, you need to think about the balance a little bit more and about supporting the line. Okay, so once again, see flute being used. Uh, da 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 da. Now here it's much more effective because it's. You know, it just doesn't have as much competition, right? Um, there's not, there aren't any brass obtruding. There aren't other elements. The basically the only thing to worry about is second violin, but that should have been slurred as well, right? Maybe uh, down up, right? Slur and then slur. All right. All right, so we have, so so here we're starting to get like that same, um, that same phrasing that's in the the piano part, right? So just like once again, phrasing in the piano part does not have to be the same thing that is in the string parts. Like right here, 
this would probably be a lot stronger like this. All right? All right? So see that might work a whole lot better. Or you could reverse that. You could have up down and you could like you could actually slur across the bar line which I'm not as fond of, but yeah. Okay, and I mean it's it's a very cool idea. I just you know, you've got a pretty high cellos right in there. I mean, yeah, I mean it more or less works. But what you have to watch out for is sending your piccolo so high. Like once you start getting up to D sharp, F sharp, the you know, I mean, yeah, you're you're going diminuendo from pianissimo, and you really intend to get a very soft sound way up there on that high F sharp. But I have to warn you that it like it's getting towards a very hard sound for the uh, for the for the piccolo. I mean. Wouldn't it possibly have been better just to keep the octaves where they were and have the piccolo start to take over for the for the flute right in here, so that it could have a really secure, controlled sound on that high F sharp? I mean, it's not not impossible. It's just not, you know. And then here you're sending your oboe way up to that high F sharp, a piano piano diminuendo. That's really not that possible, right? Um, the the oboe gets thin, but it has kind of an edge to it, right? So this, you're not going to get that, that you know, you're not going to get what you want right there, okay? I mean, it's better to bring in the strings, which can play high and soft, much more than to, like, push the oboe way higher than it can go, all right? Um, okay, so now we get to the, the sort of beautiful, tranquil, you know, 5 p.m., getting ready for dinner moment and you know the the it's almost as if uh, Lily's um, imagination is being heightened at the same time that the time is running away right that's what I really love about the ending there is that you know you you get the sense that I mean I think that she's trying to say that it's 5 p.m. and it's time to go inside right and, but and yet all of her memories all of her joy is coalescing into just the most you know, it's almost just like coming to this beautiful climax of, of you know just she, she's just she's feeling ecstatic let's let's put it that way and it's all culminating into this one final impression right I mean she wasn't an impressionist as I mean she could use impressionist elements but that didn't make her an impressionist but she was capable of you know using symbolism and impressionism in her works so what we've got here is like harp. This is this is all pretty doable. Um, it takes some practice. Then of course, like there have to be a massive pedal change right here. Then we're you know we're getting to pretty much all naturals. <clears throat> and yeah, you're supporting that flute. I thought this was very cool. The pizzicato and the um, and the harmonics. So that's all doable. This is not doable though like these low b uh, harmonics like there's there's nothing to harmonic off of that low right uh same with this f sharp it's 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 just a little bit too low right now the b uh right up here you could do that as a touch five harmonic So, yeah, but I mean, it's still it's still fiddly. I mean, better just to not, you know, better to score them an octave higher or score them higher to where they would actually be functional or just to, you know, or just to learn more about what's possible in terms of your, like, and then here, this should never, ever happen, right? Tying a note that isn't a harmonic to a note that is harmonic. Maybe you left that out or something, but I mean, it's still not a pos it's not a functional harmonic anyway. But yeah, um, and neither is this F sharp right here, technically. I mean, you could, like I mentioned before, you can do that with a touch five harmonic, but it's still not a very good, you know, for for sh smaller instruments like violas and and violins, the touch five harmonics are really not that satisfactory. And most, I would say, probably most 
section players would have rarely ever played them, you know, unless it was a contemporary work. I like this idea right in here, the staccato above and the tremolo, like doubling tremolo in the second violins and then uh, violas, which are basically playing it at an octave, and then you have these other elements. I, f I feel that this could have been filled in much better harmonically rather than just giving it to the harps, right? Like you know how you do here, you've got the, you've got the intervals scored out. Right, and uh, you've also got some of that going on here, right, with the with the basses. I kind of feel like cellos would have been be would have been better right in here than the basses, but it's still all right. Um, yeah, uh, Arco Division Three, you need to say, and yeah, and yeah, there's there would be nothing stopping you from scoring this. Like, I mean, here's a place where you could bring flute in, right? The flute would do great with harp and uh, staccato plus tremolo in the violins. I mean, that would that would actually work over those pitches way better, right? In a situation where it is playing with music, or excuse me, with um, other instruments that complement it rather than overwhelm it, right? So anyway, Carrie, that's... Um, that's my slightly disorganized first thing in the morning after having, having not evaluated things for a bit. That's my take on your evaluation. So you know, once again, I'm just going to say that I feel that you are learning a lot and you're getting way better as an orchestrator every single time I look at one of your works. But I really need you to look at a lot of other evaluations and to really uh, remember some of the lessons, right? I mean, I think that if you if you had watched a lot of the evaluations, you would have absorbed how low to push the flute, or you know, like to watch out about using the the low register and middle register of the flute as an everyday instrument in thicker textures, right? That's that is something that that is that rarely works unless the orchestration is really first class. While there are so many other instruments that use that middle register just beautifully, English horn, clarinet, right, uh, oboe, and then pushing oboes just stratospheric at the end of a diminuendo, right? So there's, you know, I've talked about some of these things in other evaluations, so just really please look at some of these, some more of these evaluations, look at some of the ones that I did for the Mussorgsky and the Bartok and the Ravel. And, uh, you know, I think that that could all add to your uh, to your ongoing improvement. All right. So it just really it would, re it would be great to see you become the orchestrator that you are planning on being. Right. It's getting closer and closer with each year. But more score reading, more watching the evaluations that I have uh, given to other entrants to these uh, orchestration challenges and I really look forward to seeing your score next year when I do the 2021 orchestration challenge okay so great entry gave me a lot to talk about and really some interesting stuff and you know you took some chances and that's great too right so some of the, those things worked out really superbly like right in here okay so um, thanks so much now on to the next entry